this entitled mum refuses to let her 23-year-old daughter date, so she calls a cop, claiming the boyfriend has kidnapped her. But the tables quickly turn when the police officer reveals this one secret. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. This happened about five years ago. My fiance and I have been together seven years this month. We're hoping to get married this year, but might postpone due to the circumstances. We were reminiscing some old stories yesterday when this one came up and she suggested I share it. She was my girlfriend at the time. And at the time I was fully aware that her mum was a few fries short of a happy meal. But this was the pinnacle of her behavior. In the cast, EM entitled mum, girlfriend Ellie, PO police officer, and OP is me. The story. Ellie and I were living together at the time. She just stayed over from time to time when she could. I took her home after she had been staying with me a couple days and was heading to work. But shortly after, just before getting to work, I get a phone call from her and I can tell she is in tears. Apparently, when she got inside, EM immediately blew up on her about being gone for so long. Even though it was only two days and she told him she was going to be gone and kept in contact with her while she was gone. But Ellie just sort of brushed it off and went to her room. EM's house was pretty much your stereotypical crazy cat lady house. House badly decaying, cats all over the place, going to the bathroom in random places and whatnot. And when Ellie gets to her room, she realizes while she was gone, the cats peed and crapped all over a pile of her clean clothes. But whatever. Ellie decided to just bag them up and she would wash them the next time that she came to my place. Her mum didn't have a functioning washer at the time, and apparently that really set EM off. EM apparently thought Ellie was bagging her clothes because she was planning to go back to my place that night and stay another few days. So she stomped into her room, grabbed the bag, ripped it open, and flung the clothes all over the room, along with the cat crap and pee, while screaming at Ellie that she's not going anywhere. That's when Ellie ran outside and called me. She was so upset and didn't know what to do. Her mum had been doing crazy stuff to Ellie since I'd been with her, but up until now, I just helped her however I could while not getting involved and not saying a word to her mum. I told her to go ahead and get the things she needs and I'll take her to my place. She said she would love that. I told my work I was going to be late due to an emergency and turned around to go to pick her up. When I pulled back up to the house, Ellie was in the driveway crying. I went and hugged her, told her it was going to be okay and she could stay with me as long as she wanted. So she went back inside to get her things. I was standing outside waiting. I heard the door open again and went to help Ellie with her things. Uh oh, it's her mum. EM comes stomping out with her hair crazy and frizzled and an old nightgown. She beelines for me and gets right in my face. EM, with an extremely thick, high-pitched southern accent, My daughter said I need to come out here and ask what you think of me. I knew that was a blatant lie, as Ellie would never instigate this. You got something to say, huh? You think I'm trash, don't you? That's what you think, isn't it? Again, up until now, I'd completely kept my mouth shut and was trying to maintain that. But this woman was up in my face, freaking out, and was tormenting the woman I loved. So I finally looked at her and broke my silence. Why do you treat her like this? <sighs> what do you mean? That's my daughter. I worship the ground she walks on. Oh really? So calling her a... is worship? Yes, I've heard her say this with my own ears. I would never say anything like that. OP getting rather irate. Bullcrap, I've heard you say it. You get your freaking butt off of my property. Okay, I almost never find myself in situations like this, so I'm not used to it. I say that because after she said this, I pretty much saw red. I'm not proud of it, but I started shouting out every curse word in the book that I could possibly think of at the top of my lungs while she went back in the house. But thankfully, that only lasted a few seconds and I immediately calmed down. So finally, Ellie comes back out with her stuff. We put it in the car and I assume it's over. But Ellie turns to me and says, I'm sorry, but we can't leave yet. Why not? 
<laughs> Mom called the cops. I sort of had a feeling that would happen, but no big deal. So we just sat and waited for the cop to arrive. After about 10 minutes or so, a cop car pulls up. Right when he does, EM comes out of the house and oh my gosh, yes she was doing exactly what you think. She instantly puts on the fragile brittle old lady act, hunched over walking slowly the whole gig. And of course, when P.O. asks her what happened, she has to pitch her entire medical chart to the guy. Ellie will tell you, this woman has been terminally ill for 12 years, lol. So when she finally gets done trying to milk this poor guy for sympathy, she tells her version of what happened. Sir, he came onto my property and verbally attacked me. He's awful to me, sir, and I've never done such anything to him. He turned my daughter against me and he's trying to convince her to leave. At first he seemed somewhat sympathetic to her, until he turns to Ellie. Ma'am, is this your boyfriend? Yes, sir. Okay, and how old are you? Sir, I'm 23. This was my favorite part because the officer looked up from his notepad with a look of, wait, what? Obviously he was thinking Ellie was a minor or something based off of how EM was acting, but quickly realized just what he was dealing with. Eventually, he turns to me. Okay sir, please give me your version of what happened. I did so. Funny side note, at one point, P.O. looks up at me and says, You look really familiar. Do I know you? It actually turned out that P.O. and I had gone to high school together. Once we recognized each other, we laughed and shook hands very briefly. This was hilarious because out of the corner of my eye, I see EM has a big scowl on her face as she sees me getting friendly with the police officer. But anyway, P.O. puts his notepad away and turns to me. Just FYI, he says the following with this heavy tone of, I know that you're fully aware of this and I don't believe you're in the wrong at all, but I have to say this as a formality. Well OP, she doesn't want you on the property, so be aware that if you come back here you technically can be charged with trespassing. Do you understand this as I've explained it? Absolutely sir. But sir, I want to press charges. He didn't do anything illegal ma'am. But he verbally assaulted me. I understand that, and while that was ill-advised, he slightly turns to me and gives me a small gesture with his hand, and I nod in agreement. It's not something I could arrest him for. He agrees he'll not come back on your property without your direct permission. Ugh, okay fine, whatever. Ellie, come back inside. What? No. You heard, police officer. OP is leaving, and you're staying here. Whoa, ma'am, I didn't say that at all. But, but... Your daughter's not a child, ma'am. She's a full-grown adult. She has every right to go wherever she wants. I'm her mother. She lives under my roof. I told her she needs to stay here, so she needs to stay. No, ma'am, that's not how it works. If she wants to go and stay with her boyfriend, there is absolutely nothing you can do to stop her. EM starts the fake crocodile tears and stomps in the house in defeat. Ellie and I thanked the officer, got in the car, and left. We've been living together ever since. Happy ending. Believe it or not, EM isn't really much of an EM anymore. Over the years, since that day, EM has actually decided to make an effort to try and improve herself. I guess she realized that if she didn't make changes, she would lose her relationship with Ellie. So EM started taking advantage of her medical coverage and went to see her psychiatrist and got medicine for mental illness she actually had, as opposed to the ones she would make up. Since then, well, she's actually gotten way better. She takes her medicine regularly, and has a boyfriend that is an extremely kind man and treats Ellie as though she were his own daughter. So basically, EM isn't really an EM anymore. We actually get along very well and we see them frequently and we help each other out whenever we can. We actually look back on the early years when she was in fact an EM and laugh. So not only is everyone getting along well, we can actually share the cringe stories and happily laugh about them. Well, everybody loves a good redemption story, don't they? You know, this gives just a little bit of hope that maybe, just maybe, not every entitled person out there will stay an entitled person. But apparently, it might just take a lot of medication. This is from about two years ago when I broke my leg. 
I grew up in a pretty affluent area, so it's not uncommon to run into entitled parents. Most of them I met at my job, but I ran into this jerk in the emergency room. I was rock wall climbing for the first time, and I had no idea what I was doing. I climbed to the top of the free climbing wall, about 10 feet from the bottom of my foot to the ground. Thought, it's probably not a good idea to jump, and then jumped. I landed on one leg and really screwed myself up. I ended up having a spinal fracture in my tibia and shattered a bone in my ankle that I needed surgery to correct. The owner of the rock climbing gym carried me to my car and my ex was pulling about 100 on the freeway while I sobbed in the back seat. I'm only telling you this to establish that I am in a lot of pain. The emergency room is very crowded, though I imagine it always is. It's about 9pm at this point. Everyone seems to be in varying degrees of pain. One woman is cradling what is clearly a broken arm and sobbing. Some people don't seem to have anything wrong with them. But heck, I'm sure I looked like I had nothing wrong with me since I had no visible damage. Just on and off crying. I kept praying I only had a torn muscle because for some reason I thought that was better than a broken bone. At this point in time, the only thing I know is that I can't walk on my leg, I'm in a lot of pain, and I can definitely feel something moving in my leg. The nurses are walking around bringing ice packs and Advil, asking people to fill out sheets, etc. In the time that we're waiting there, I think five families came through saying something was wrong with their kid. Half the kids didn't even get taken back. One woman was insisting that her child was deathly ill and needed to be seen immediately, while her kid was using the waiting room tables like a jungle gym. It was a long night. Around 11pm, a dad and a girl, who looked about 8 or 9, come in both in pyjamas. The girl is holding a bowl with something red coating the sides of it. The dad is talking to the front desk ladies while one of the nurses begins taking vitals on the little girl. While the dad is mid-conversation, the little girl starts throwing up. She's throwing up blood. Then dad starts screaming that they need to be seen immediately. The nurse calmly says, 10, 10, and two more nurses come out, one bringing a wheelchair. The little girl is clearly weak and the nurses have to help her into the chair. They whisk her into the back. I was in that waiting room until 2 in the morning that night and I didn't see her come back out. That moment in time will forever be burned into my memory. Even now, I can almost see it happening in front of me while I think back to it. Enter Entitled Dad. ED had the fourth baby or toddler that I had seen that night. Every parent had come in saying their baby had a fever and every parent had been sent home after being told the fever wasn't high enough to cause concern, including the mum whose kid was using the waiting room as his own personal playground. The ED was cradling his daughter in his arms, who was about two and a half. I worked with kids so I'm good at guessing ages. The ED is furious. He starts going off at the front desk ladies saying, You're not taking my daughter's ailment seriously. We've been waiting for half an hour and have been seen by nobody. The entire waiting room snickers at that. I'd been waiting for two and a half hours at this point and all I had to show for it was an ice pack and some Advil. There were a few people who were there when I first arrived who were still waiting. Like I said, it was a busy night. While there was definitely some annoyed faces earlier, after seeing that little girl vomiting blood, I think most of us got put in our place real fast. Yeah, my leg might have been broken, and yeah, I'm in a lot of pain. But I'm not getting any worse while my butt is parked in this chair. The ED starts berating the front desk woman for not taking people back in the order they arrived. He's screaming for her to look at all these people who are waiting and you choose to take the newest patients before anyone else. The front desk woman calmly explains that they take people in the order of the most serious case to least serious, not in the order they arrive. The ED is still on his rant, calling her unprofessional and how he's going to take his business to another hospital. And yes, I'm serious. The nurse offers to check his daughter's temperature to see if anything has changed. The girl had some device on her toe and it's been so long I don't remember what the nurse has said about it. I don't remember what his daughter's fever was at. 
but the nurse said it hadn't changed and repeated that they take people in order of how serious the sickness is. The ED ripped off the device on his daughter, slammed it on the desk and said, You people are useless! and marched out, the rest of his family in tow. His daughter had been sleeping the whole time, looking quite peaceful actually. For the rest of the night, there were ongoing murmurs saying, What the heck was that about? Every now and then, someone would mumble something about, I might be a jerk, but at least I'm not that guy. Or something to that effect. Also people mumbling about how you could act like that while the blood vomit from the poor little girl was still sitting on the floor behind him while he yelled. I still wonder about what happened to that young girl. I don't wonder about that man's toddler. I'm sure she's fine. If you have anything wrong with you or a family member and you need to go to the hospital, it's going to be stressful no matter how bad it is. But under no circumstance would you actually want the hospital to take in the patients who are there first. Because if you had something very serious happen to you, of course you're going to want to be rushed immediately to be taken care of. You're not going to care that there's some guy with a broken toe who's been there for two hours. Like, yeah, of course, you go in first. Does he realize that it's a place where it's a matter of life and death? I guess not. This is an encounter from about a few years ago when I was young, not even a teenager, but I don't specifically remember how old. So this story happens in the lobby of a hospital. I had some throat problems, not important, and had come to get that checked. I'd come with my father, who has the title of an important foreign diplomat, and when we go into crowded places such as that hospital, we have a few guards with us. We had just finished and we were sitting in a corner, away from all public, waiting for the reception to clear up so he could pay the bills. A few minutes pass and he goes to pay. I'm all alone with no one and no guards around me, although they kept with the occasional glances to see if everything was okay. Along comes Karen and her hexborn of four children. Not really the Karen by appearance, but boy did her personality speak for itself. I was playing a game on my phone, a helicopter game or something, not important, and just minding my own business, when one of the kids came over to me and looked at my phone. He just kept staring at the screen and eventually asked what I was playing. I replied with the name of the game. He then watched for a few minutes and the other children also came up, grouping around me. One of the guards took a glance and gestured if he should intervene, but I, not being that type, gestured him away. Now all was good till one of the kids asked if he could play. I wasn't really comfortable, but I don't know why I still let him play. And. He ran off with it, the entirety of the hex spawn following. He went to his mother and I quickly got up and followed him. His mother looked like she didn't care about the fact that her son randomly had a phone and just pretended to listen to his endless babbling about how I gave him my phone. And when I asked for my phone back, she quickly turned to me and the conversation goes as follows. In the cast, EM entitled mother, EK1, 2, and 3 entitled kids, G1 and 2, guards, D, dad, and me. I ask for my phone back. Sorry, what? Ma'am, can I have my phone back please? What phone? That one? I point to it. My son found that phone, it's his. No ma'am, he took it from me. No, he wouldn't do that. Why would he want you steal from such a cheap slob anyway? I don't even think you have one. Oh my gosh, his phone. Me being a kid, I am speechless. EK1 who took the phone in the first place came up with EK3 who was older than me. EK3 pushed me and told me to F off. I wasn't thinking to look around for the guards cause my brain at the time was a peanut. I slowly start sobbing and EK1 starts laughing as EK3 mocks my crying and calls me a baby and stuff. Which came out harsh to me at the time. I'm so embarrassed saying this. It was all this time that my dad was done with the bills and came around the corner to where I was sitting. Saw me crying a few feet ahead with some teenager mocking me. One of the guards quickly ran up and pushed EK3 aside. Get back now! EK3 is taken aback, not expecting this to happen. What's your problem? Ah, uh, she pushed my son! He's trying to hurt us, help! The security officer, who had come up, was in a suit 
and you don't see that in my country often. So EM didn't think even the slightest bit that it was a security officer. At this point, my father had come up, and he's pretty angry tempered, but he kept his cool and shot some angry looks with the officers left to speak with the woman. The officer who came to save me quickly took me aside. Are you okay? Did they hurt you? He pushed me, points to EK3. Okay, I'll talk to him. At this point, EK2 walks up to me. He has my phone in his hand and looks like the youngest. He hands me my phone and says, sorry, with a long face. I was taken to the car and my father showed up some time later who said he had gone to talk with the reception to complain about the family. Now, I know we know the pain of an entitled parent, but could you imagine living with equally entitled siblings? Every day would just be a nightmare. It's just crazy to think that you could even have guards and you're still not protected from the powers of an entitled family. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.